Welcome everybody to the CG Spectrum Institute information webinar. My name is Baden Uren, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and I'm the academic director of CG Spectrum Institute. I've had an academic career for about 20 years. Um, I kind of fell into academia uh, prior to being in the education space. I was in the private equity and investment banking space. So I used to be a, an investment analyst for a large private equity firm here in Australia. And as part of that, I, I developed a bunch of insight into, into entrepreneurs and the way in which entrepreneurs start and grow businesses. And, um, and myself, I have started and grown businesses. So I was just mentioning that I spent some time in the United States. Uh, that was my first ever business. It was in my early 20s. And essentially I did that because I needed to find a visa in order to stay. Uh, and so I came up with a, a certain type of visa called the E2 Treaty Trader Visa, where if you set up a business and you were trading between treaty nations, um, you could stay and you could work. So that was um, basically necessity for my first business. Uh, wholesale fashion, fine merino wool Australian clothing, uh, which at the time was fairly unique over in the US. And uh, my wife and I have a, a boutique veterinary clinic. Uh, that's basically her business. Well, it is her business. Um, I pretend that I'm involved. Uh, and, and it's true. I do, um, I do do the maintenance and, uh, and little things that are needed. But uh, essentially, that's my wife's business. Um, I also have a, a consultancy business called the Unconventional Group. We do we do innovation consulting for large organizations and for government entities. Um, one of our big contracts was with Services Australia, which is, a, which is the, the major client facing um, government agency here in Australia that takes care of all of the, the Medicare and, um, and uh, uh, all of the unemployment benefits and any client like, like consumer facing entity. Um, so I did a little bunch of work for them. But anyway, we do that sort of thing. And I had a, uh, an ag business uh, founded in about 2015. It's called AgriChain. Uh, essentially, we were using blockchain to integrate and to make efficient the supply chains in the commodity space. So wheat, barley, sorghum, uh, canola, those sorts of grains. We were, we were systematizing uh, using blockchain as a technology uh, to make more efficient the supply chains in those, in those commodity spaces. So that's a little bit about me. Um, you see at the bottom there, I've been a judge of the Young Australian Young Entrepreneur of the Year Awards um, for probably about 15 years now. Uh, most recently, um, I was really pleased to, to award the national winner, which was a company called Dental Boutique. Um, Dental Boutique is totally changing the way in which dentistry is delivered, very customer focused. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, I'm really excited to be in this role with CG Spectrum Institute. Uh, I've been here for about a, a year and a half now in preparation for the launch of these degrees. Um, I have a real passion for, for building entrepreneurial capability through education. Um, I've developed it both academically through my time in the university sector, but also practically through my own experiences in business. Um, and I've brought that together to, to really inform the ways in which we're driving this particular set of courses, the Diploma of Business and the Bachelor of Business, um, and leveraging off uh, the, the, the real strength that our parent company, CG Spectrum, brings to the table in terms of their connection with uh, and, and intense and deep knowledge of the creative arts space, um, animation, visual effects, game design, uh, CG Spectrum has been um, a dominant player in that space for, for quite some time. So that's a little bit about me. I'd like to pass across to uh, my co-host, which is Alina. She's, a, she's our head of, head of admissions. Alina, would you like to perhaps uh, take over and uh, introduce yourself and give us a bit of an idea about uh, your background and, and how you can help with, with respect to CD Spectrum Institute? Thank you, Baden. Yes, so my name is Alina Zavitsanos. Um, and before I continue, I should preface that I am streaming to you from my home office and uh, I do have a, uh, a loud dog with me. So apologies if he decides he would like to... Um, include any any thoughts and opinions for himself. <laughs> so my um, uh, role here at CG Spectrum as head of admissions um, is that I will be assisting uh, students as part of their application process, as well as um, any uh, logistical questions, things like payment plans, study options, anything like enrollment deadlines. That's what I'm here to help you with and guide you through the process 
of uh, enrolling with CGSI. A bit of background about myself. I have been at CG Spectrum, um, the global brand, since 2015. And I have been part of its um, evolution to where it is now. It's been really exciting to see it grow from a really small online college to uh, what it is now, which is now, you know, offering business courses, which is fantastic. And uh, prior to uh, working at CG Spectrum, I was actually a primary school teacher. Um, but then I decided that that wasn't exactly the career path for me. And I decided to pivot. I, I knew I wanted to stay in the education space, but uh, perhaps not in that uh, teaching realm. So I then came to CG Spectrum and I've loved it and have never left. So a bit about CG Spectrum. Um, it was established in 2011 by our two Canadian co-founders, Nick Frieden and Jeff Pepper. Uh, they both moved to Australia and then relaunched the school in 2015. And since then, we've grown to offer a range of different creative courses. Uh, we have over 3,000 plus students in over 60 countries and have developed some really strong connections within the industry. Um, and as part of that evolution, we are now offering the business courses, which uh, Baden will go into in more detail shortly. Thanks, Alina. Uh, uh, a bit of an agenda as to how we're going to go through. So we're going to give a, back, a bit of a background as to what these courses are all about. Uh, we have a real, like a bit of a true north about creative and critical thinking as a true north as to what we're trying to be developing through our, through our courses. So a bit about why that's important and the positioning for, this, for the courses. Then some details about the courses, uh, the career pathways that might come uh, from, those, from studying those courses. Uh, some particulars about our our advantage, what we believe our 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 unique offering to market is. Um, we'll give a bit of an overview of what that looks like. Uh, I'll give you some insight as to some of the academics, our 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 educators that will be joining you in your learning journey through CG Spectrum, um, and then some logistics, how it works, um, the community you'll be in, you'll be connecting to, um, some specifics about admissions and applications and. And of course, uh, just right towards the end, uh, we'll have um, some more information about the scholarships that are on offer uh, for these two courses launching in 2023. That's kind of a bit of a, an overview as to where we're headed and what we're doing. So that, that's, um, that's what we're up to. So let's get into, into why. What are, we, what are we here for? Why is it that, that CG Spectrum Institute is coming to the table with some business degrees that are really focused on on the creative industries, but 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 more broadly, creative thinking, um, and uh, and I would say to you that this is absolutely necessary, absolutely necessary. If I was if I was to have a young person come up to me and and say, uh, what competency do you think I should really focus in on with my education or developing as a human being moving forward into the future? Um, I'd answer with two, and I'd say curiosity and creativity, because they're at the they're they're at the core of a set of competencies that will continue to become more and more important as technology imbues and embeds itself into society. Uh, we know that the world is going digital. Uh, we're aware that metaverse environments are becoming more and more pervasive in the way in which especially young people interact. Uh, and we see examples of industries that are in like the animation and visual effects space, which is supporting this digital move absolutely booming at the moment. Um, some research into the, the size of the animation visual effects market in 2021 showed it to be around about the $170 billion mark, um, growing to over $400 billion in 2030. It's massive, massive growth. And if you add gaming onto that, it's, it's over $550 billion. Um, this is an emerging, explosive, vibrant industry that is representative of a massive shift that is happening in the way in which us as humans interact and the way in which business is moving. This is a great advantage for young people who were born digital. Um, I'm not, I'm a Gen Xer. I, I was born analog and have had to adapt and become digital in the way in which I see the world. But young people have a massive advantage because they were born digital. And that gives them a, a baseline from which to, to really uh, connect and to and to um, to develop into their future careers and and not just their careers but in in them as as people. 
because the world is becoming more digital. There's no doubt about it. Associated with more digital and more digital world is the fact that we need to become more human. Things that are not necessarily uniquely human are going to become automated. We all know this. Jobs like, um, like bookkeeping and base, base legal practice around insolvency and bankruptcy, and uh, they're all being automated uh, and will increasingly become automated. But the attributes that won't be automated are those that are uniquely human. And that's what we're focusing on here at CG Spectrum Institute. Uh, we're focusing on building creative, critical thinking because it's at the core of the human advantage moving forward. Yes, those industries are booming, uh, but it doesn't need to be in those industries. It'll be in any, any industry. Uniquely human capabilities will be at the core of competitive advantage for people moving forward in their careers. And that's why we have that as our true north in our, in our, in our courses uh, very clearly. They are business courses, yes. So they're applicable to the business world. Uh, doesn't matter what industry, but um, you know we have this slant because of our history at CG Spectrum into the creative arts. But um, but these are business courses that are looking to develop uniquely human capabilities. Critical creative thinking being being one of them. So that's that's why we're doing what we're doing, uh, and we do that through two main offerings. We have a diploma of business, and we have a bachelor of business. Essentially, the bachelor of business is a is a traditional twenty four subject. Uh, six trimester uh, offering into market. Um, and the diploma is essentially the first two, two trimesters of that degree. So it's two trimesters, eight subjects, uh, roughly about seven months, seven or eight months of, of completing. So the diploma of business about seven months, bachelor of business about two years. We run here at CG Spectrum in a trimester system February, May, September. Um, and that's kind of where we're going. The focus is on business, uh, but, but really developing those uniquely human, human capabilities that will drive your competitive advantage as a human, whether you want to be your own business owner or whether you want to be an employee or you're an employee with a side hustle, or whatever, whatever the, the outcome that is, that is desired by you, um, these core human capabilities will be at the core. Um, so essentially, that's what we're, what's we're offering into market, uh, a diploma of business and a bachelor of business. You can see some of the details uh, there. First intakes in February. Um, there's some of the details that, are, that I mentioned. Um, applications are closing in the third week of January. Um, so if this is of interest to you, you've got a bit of time to consider and, and put forward. Um, but that's, uh, that's sort of the logistics of the courses as we're, as we're push, pushing forward them. So let's have a look at about... Um, some specifics. You see at the bottom of that list there, this, this concept of transdisciplinary co collaboration, creative thinking, problem solving, innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship. These, these, are, our, these are our core sort of offerings and, and what we believe will be important to employees moving forward and for business owners moving forward. Uh, and that comes into the way in which we structure each of our subjects. Uh, we have Yes, some group work involved, but in each of those group works, we're looking to, to, to split you up amongst different discipline areas and different interest areas. And so um, that's, that's certainly a, 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 um, a, a, an important component of your educational experience here at CG Spectrum Institute. We have a small, private, um, very personable approach to delivering each of those subjects. Uh, so we'll have class sizes, you know, no more than 20 targeted at about 15 in the way in which we we go so you'll be you'll be studying in small intimate groups you'll do so with nice strong connection to your to your instructors and your educators um, it's a real personable approach with live interactions um, and i'll talk in a little while about the the industry connection of each of our academics that we're bringing to mark to to, to you to to support your learning journey um, but that's a real key focus of ours is this connection between the academic world and the real world um, and, and yes, delivering on academic rigor, but only when it gives value to the way in which it's put into play in business. Um, who is this for? Uh, essentially, it's for a, a, a broad range of individuals. Uh, interestingly, we see in, especially with Gen Zs, the, the re latest research from McCrindle showed a big, a big broad-based uh, sort of um, 
uh, survey of graduating Gen Z students, 86% um, of them were imagining that they would have a portfolio approach to their income moving forward. Only 14% thought that they would just have a job and move forward with the job. Almost nine out of 10 Gen Zs imagine that that when they're moving into the world of work, that's going to be a bit of a portfolio approach. They might have a job, they might have a range of jobs. Um, they might have a side hustle that's on the side that's supporting them in their job that may well turn into a full-time venture that they might want to create themselves. So we see this, this blending, this hybrid employee model pervading into uh, the future of work. And um, this is what our courses have been designed for. They've been designed for, for a young person who imagines themselves to be moving into a, a vibrant and, um, and uncertain work environment where they're going to be comfortable having a bit of a portfolio approach to, to their career. They may want to start their own venture. Yes. Um, they might want to work for an organization. Yes. Um, they might want to do both of those. Yes. Uh, so I would say to you that um, the person that we're really focused on delivering this educational experience for is one who considers themselves as a bit of a hybrid, somebody who is not averse to to having a job, um, also has an interest uh, to start their own thing um, and may well do both of those at the same time until they work out what's right for them. Uh, that's who we're designing our courses for, that hybrid students. A bit of an overview as to the, the degree, this is the Bachelor of Business. You'll see um, that generally speaking, we're splitting into three major components. We have general business subjects. Uh, so these are things like foundations of understanding finance and economics, we, but we, we bring it back to what's a subject called understanding the business environment. Understanding the business environment is recognizing and appreciating the external factors that are at play for you going out and being an employee or uh, a founder in the business world. Um, things like understanding, uh, for example, the, the things that are happening across the world at the moment with massive inflation. Uh, what are the implications of rising inflation and how that impacts economies? As modern humans moving into the world of business, uh, you need foundational knowledge about those macro influences on commerce as they're moving forward. Um, and so you learn that in your subjects. So we've got these general business subjects how to how to read financial statements so that you you, you know how you can put forward profit and loss views uh, around understanding work within in environments, um, noting that we have a big focus on not becoming technical accountants. No, this is not the course for you if you want to become an accountant, but rather if you're um, a worker who wants to be able to talk to an accountant and not have the wool pulled over your eyes. So you understand what is being done, but we're not going to be tasking you with, you know, entering into the workforce as, a, as an audit graduate into one of the big accounting firms. No, that's not what, what we're doing here. Um, we want you to be informed about those general business concepts, accounting, finance, marketing, and so on and so forth. But our big push is into, is into management and entrepreneurship. Um, and I'd say to you that entrepreneurship is actually just a... a a, a form of management. It's a particular type of management. And when you study in our courses, you'll be able to understand very clearly what the distinction between those two are. But, but as a brief introduction to you, um, entrepreneurs are the masters of uncertainty. Um, uncertainty is when uh, the attributes of how you're going into business are not known. You can't actually predict what they are. Management is about prediction. Entrepreneurship is about creation. Uh, so uh, we deliver foundational knowledge of how to manage organizations and also how to drive entrepreneurial uh, capability in humans and in organizations. So that's the structure of, the, of the, the business degree. You can see that big, heavy emphasis on management and entrepreneurship. It's replicated in our diploma of business, but because a diploma of business is a foundation subject, there's more general business. You need to be across those general business concepts, and then you get 
the foundations of management and the foundations of entrepreneurship. So the graduates out of our diploma program will get uh, a foundational knowledge of those two major areas of prediction and, cre and, and creation, um, as well as a, a well-rounded understanding of the general business uh, discipline. Whereas in the Bachelor of Business, yes, that general business is in place and you get more opportunity to explore management and entrepreneurship. So that's essentially like the structuring in terms of the subjects that are in the degrees. And if you've got particular questions about what subjects might be in those, what, what are the typical subjects, um, I can answer those uh, during the Q&A. So let's have a think about uh, here you are, you're coming into this educational intervention and what might be on the other side of it. This probably will seem um, quite logical given the setup that I've given for how we're creating these courses. Um, essentially, this is, this is designed for a, a hybrid individual, somebody who may well become a business owner themselves, uh, or perhaps is moving into leadership or management roles within a business. And so is doing some of the functions of being a business owner, but within within somebody else's organization. It could be to help you with a successful side hustle, going onto Spotify and being able to sell products or whatever, whatever that side hustle might be. Um, and it may well just be what you need uh, to be able to, to progress within a career that you have already started. Let's just say that, you fract, for example, you're, you're already in an, an organization and you're you've maybe got five or six years behind you, uh, this type of degree might be what is needed to be able to move you up into middle management to start to take responsibility for the management of an organization. So a bunch of different career pathways. Um, again, I'd say to you that the real answer is a bit of a hybrid answer. Uh, they're, they're very career pathways um, because that's the way we see the future of work moving. So a bit about CG Spectrum and what it is that's unique about us. So CG Spectrum Institute has been created from scratch. I was brought in to help to create this, this course ready for the future of work, for the future of education. Uh, we've created it from scratch and it's brand new. Uh, so we, we don't have um, an inherited culture or, um, or set of structures and systems that limit us with respect to what it is we're going to deliver. Rather, we've been brought in. And when I was brought into the team, uh, what I was asked was, if you could build the most progressive, reimagined business course for today's world, what would it look like? Um, and that's how I was brought to the brought to the table into CG Spectrum Institute. And that's what I've endeavored to, to, to bring to the table through our, two, through our two degrees, through the diploma and through the bachelor, is a reimagined business degree for the modern world. Um, so it's very connected to industry. Uh, each of our, our lecturers has industry connection and industry experience. So they're not what you would imagine to be a traditional academic. Um, for example, uh, yes, I hold a PhD. My PhD is actually in finance. Um, and uh, that was linked into my previous industry experience where I was in investment banking and private equity and I was doing deals and, and my, you probably don't want to know the details of my, <laughs> my PhD, but I was looking at a particular research project that was targeted towards an industry outcome. We were looking at how we're going to provide housing to the aging population in Australia. Um, and so that's what my PhD was focused on. Um, so all of, all of my academic base is, has always been, been linked with industry. And, and as I am today, um, I'm a bit of a hybrid, a, a bit of a hybrid human. Yes, I've got this job with CG Spectrum Institute. Um, I also have a business on the side. I actually, I've got three businesses on the side um, that I'm involved with in, in, in varying degrees. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about CG Spectrum. We're very industry connected. Uh, uh, where techs are registered. So if you do the Diploma of Business, the Bachelor of Business, it is recognized. Um, it's an accredited degree uh, that is internationally recognized. Um, and 
uh, if you go on to postgraduate studies uh, and you've done your Bachelor of Business with CD Spectrum Institute, that will that will count towards and be credited to you know as as your experience in order to get you into a master's degree. So that that accreditation piece is really really key. But what we what we offer to you is as you're seeing in this in this webinar is an active and engaged and personal approach to your education. We have placed you the student at the core of 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 how we have designed these, these courses and the way in which we will deliver these courses. When I've gone out to market and, and attracted the academics and the educators to come in to deliver these courses, these subjects within the courses, um, that's been at my forefront. Is, is this academic student focused? Um, are they really, really care? Are they caring of the, the graduate outcome for the students going through their subject and how does that translate into which, the way in which they 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 teach um, so that's um the real benefit of of studying at cg spectrum institute is um, our brand is well recognized in the creative creative industries um, so if you happen to be going into that space the cg spectrum brand is is very well recognized um, and if you're looking to be a creative business person, I would suggest to you that, that um, getting a, a business degree from a creative organization will give you an advantage. It's a, it's a very authentic statement to market about how you're choosing to educate yourself. Yes, you've got lots of options to, to move forward into a business degree. Um, there are 38 universities registered in Australia. Um, well, they all offer business degrees. Uh, why would you study at CG Spectrum? Uh, because we're different. We're, we're unique. We're young. We're progressive. We have, a, we have creativity at our core. And as I've, as I've um, inferred to you, and as you're probably no doubt aware, um, critical creative thinking will be key moving forward into the future of work. That's why you'd study with us. Um, of course, I'm biased, but you know, um, I, I believe in this space. This is, this is why I'm here. Um, I mentioned that I've, I've targeted particular educators uh, to come in and to join me. I thought I'd just give you a, a couple of examples. So we have one lecturer, his name is Alden Fiskerud. Um, he teaches the creativity and ideation subject. He also teaches the strategic management subject. Um, and you'd think, how does that relate? How can someone be across both creativity and ideation, which sounds very grassroots and organic, and strategic management, which sounds very structured? Alden is uniquely uniquely positioned to deliver on those subjects within our within our course. Uh, he's um, got five master's degrees across multiple dis disciplines uh, and um, and ha has lectured at universities here in Australia for about 15 years in those fields. So he's got a strong academic base behind. But on the side, um, Alden was um, was the music director at a at a at a at a nightclub here at, on the Gold Coast called Elsewhere um, for about ten years. Um, he's an electronic music producer. He has a, a band or a, a a brand called Fun Boys. You can find him uh, on on SoundCloud. Before he came and joined us, he was actually head of innovation at AutoGuru. AutoGuru is uh, has been awarded. Uh, one of the top 10 most innovative organizations in Australia for the past three years by the Australian Financial Review. And he was head of innovation at that organization, um, driving systemically and strategically an innovation agenda through that fast growing organization. Um, so yes, academically based, but lots of industry connection and experience. And he brings that to the fore in the way in which he delivers his subjects. Another example is Bianca Phillips. Bianca is teaching our business law subject. What, there's business law in, in a business degree? Yes, there is. Uh, not so that you'll become a business lawyer, but so that you can have conversations and engage with the legal department or and, and to operate legally within your operations, within, within organizations or within your own business. Um, so Bianca also has a master's of law from the University of Melbourne, an undergrad degree in law. Uh, she's a practicing lawyer um, and she has a particular interest in the intersection of technology and healthcare and, and the legal ramifications of technology moving into the healthcare space. Um, so, and is 
widely demanded for her, her for her her keynotes on that space. She's written a book in that space, um, and she's a practicing lawyer. She actually does it. Uh, so there's a couple of examples of some of the academics that have that have been brought. And I use the word academic um, purposefully, but also loosely. Because I would suggest to you that we as academics are not your typical academics. Uh, not we don't have um, we don't have leather patches on our elbows and tweed jackets and um, what you might imagine of a professor at a university. However, like we have been professors at universities, uh, and we've chosen to chosen to move into a into a more progressive educational environment where we can have a, a real impact on the way in which education is being delivered. A little bit of an insight into the logistics of the way in which our subjects will operate. Um, we're going to have students from across the world in these in these subjects. They're all online. Uh, typically, a, a, a class, a subject is run um, over a 12 week time period. And in that 12 weeks, each of those weeks will have uh, a module associated with them. And each of those module has a series of pre-recorded what we call asynchronous material, uh, bite-sized chunks of content. Uh, this isn't a professor standing in front of a, a lectern delivering a monologue on a content. No, this is a series of conversations delivering the content for that module uh, interspersed with TED Talks and YouTube videos and Harvard Business Review articles and industry industry resources, lots of lots of uh, relevant material that goes through. So there's roughly about an hour's worth of, of asynchronous pre-recorded material. And then each, each weekly module has a two hour live interactive workshop where you are experientially learning the material for that module. Because of the fact that we're global and we have students from around the world, we'll be setting up our time zones of those live sessions based upon the, the students that are involved. As I, as I mentioned, we have a target sort of um, student number of about 15 running through these, these subjects. Um, and so given that 15, we'll figure out where people are and we'll put something in place timetabling wise that meets the needs time zone wise um, of, of, of those participants. Because we're here in Australia, lots of our academics or our, our uh, educators are here in Australia. Um, uh, I've just seen some people that are in Colorado and Washington, D.C. A good time is this uh, late afternoon, evening slash early morning in America, um, early morning, mid-morning time uh, here in Australia. So it's a, not a bad time zone um, from, that, from that regard. But we'll work that out on a case-by-case -case basis based upon this, the students that are engaging in each of those subjects. So I'll quickly hand across to Alina. She'll talk about some of the, the specifics about the admissions and how that process works. Over to you, Alina. Yes, so I will quickly go through some of the admissions requirements um, and I will cover uh, the requirements if you're based in Australia as well as if you are based internationally. So first off, if you're a school leaver, so if you are someone that is just graduated from, say, year 11 or year 12, what we'll, what we'll require will be either um, an ATAR score of 55 or above, um, we'll either need the tertiary preparation program or we'll need a VET qualification um, at an AQF level five or higher, which is a which is a VET diploma. Um, now, if you're a mature age student, so if you have someone that perhaps um, has uh, uh, finished high school, say 10, 20 years ago, um, the ATAR score obviously won't apply to you. So in that case, um, we'll need you to complete a tertiary admissions test or you can also submit a, pro a portfolio, um, and that's if you have any um, ex prior experience or relevant academic or professional work, um, and that is obviously on a case-by-case -case basis. There is no specific requirements for those portfolios. We we understand that everyone's different, so in that case, we just send, we ask you to send um, any examples over of just what you have, and we'll go from there. Now, um, if you don't fit either of these to personas. Um, again, everyone is different. In that case, I will ask you just to uh, contact myself and we'll go from there and we'll kind of discuss um, your personal history, um, what your goals are, and uh, we can decide from there what maybe course is best for you. For the rest of the world, it is quite different. Again, uh, you know, uh, the requirements would be different, especially if you're in Australia, because we have um, uh, different uh, legal requirements here. Um, in the, for the rest of the world, we ask that you can provide your high school graduation certificate. And again, it's a case by case basis. Uh, everyone is different, but if you can send anything 
that is relevant to that type of certificate, that would be fantastic. Then we also ask that you meet the time zone requirements. Again, it is um, a little bit difficult given that our most of our academics are based in Australia. So there will be um, some students perhaps in certain areas of the world where it doesn't quite match up, but we'll do our best. We'll try and make something work. Uh, we ask that obviously you, you meet their payment requirements. At this time, we don't offer financial aid and that you are proficient in English. And that includes written and spoken English as well. But if you had any questions regarding those requirements, uh, my email address is there on the slide. So you can just uh, shoot me an email and ask any questions and we can go from there. We will always do our best to, to, um, to meet the needs of the students that are involved. And, and sometimes that that might not work, but we'll, in all cases, we will be very student focused in our delivery um, and, and try to meet the needs of our students as we're moving forward. So let's talk about the scholarships. We have six scholarships on offer uh, and uh, they, are, they are in three different categories, um, excellence in creative business, the creative first nation scholarship, and the creative trailblazer scholarship. Essentially what we're looking for with each of these scholarships um, are, are basically the same with a slightly different context. Before I go into there, I'll give you the examples of what the scholarships are. For each of those uh, uh, those areas, we have two scholarships on offer. So for example, in the Excellence and Creative Business Scholarship, there are two scholarships at play. One is a 100% scholarship for the Diploma of Business. So there will be uh, one scholarship awarded, which is a full scholarship for the Diploma course. Um, the second is a 50% scholarship for the Bachelor course. Um, so those two are offered both in, in the Excellence in Creative Business course, also uh, scholar, um, Excellence in Creative Business Scholarship, also in the Creative First Nations Scholarship, and also in the Creative Trailblazer Scholarship. The difference between the three is the type of person that they are, uh, that they are um, targeted towards. So the Creative First Nations is, is quite self-explanatory. If you identify as a First Nations individual, uh, then you can apply for the Creative First Nations Scholarship. Um, so that's nice and clear. There's a, a slight difference between the Excellence in Creative Business and the Creative Trailblazer Scholarships. A person who has been more traditional in their educational experience um, and perhaps has exceeded in an educational environment might be more appropriately um, applying towards the Excellence in Creative Business. So we'd be looking for more um, academic uh, excellence in that particular scholarship. Whereas the creative trailblazer might be for someone who hasn't necessarily uh, engaged uh, well with the formal educational environment, but has excelled in other areas. Um, and that's the creative trailblazer space. Um, so when you're applying for your scholarship, think about where you might fit. Uh, do you identify as a First Nations individual? Then go for the First Nations in, um, scholarship. If you're a bit more academic in your background and you've done excellent in your academic endeavours, uh, perhaps look into the Excellence in Creative Business Scholarship. Um, if academics wasn't for you necessarily, formal education wasn't where you, where you particularly shined, but you've been shining in other aspects of your, organ of your, of your life, use the Creative Trailblazer. In all cases, we have five attributes we are looking for, and they're included on the details in our website, cgspectrum.institute. You go into the business environment, you'll see the scholarship section, and you'll see those five attributes in place. But I want to I want to take you through exactly what we're looking for. So listed on, on the website are our five. There's a curious mind, a creative streak, a proactive approach, a quest for innovation and comfort in the unknown. They're the five that are listed for you. Um, essentially what we're looking for is curiosity, creativity, proactiveness, innovativeness, and a risk tolerance. That's what we're looking for in you as a human. How you choose to present that is totally up to you, what evidence you use to present your alignment with those five desirable attributes. Um, it's totally up to you. And you, you'll be presenting it in a video format. Um, I'd stress to you that the production quality of the video isn't key. Uh, what we're really interested to see is you presenting 
yourself and how you align with those five desirable attributes? How have you shown curiosity in the way in which you've lived your life? Um, how about creativity? How about um, proactiveness? What does proactiveness mean? It means being on the front foot. It means searching out and doing rather than sitting back and reacting. Um, how about a quest for innovation? Have you just been doing what is normal and what is expected or have you been expanding boundaries? Uh, and this concept of a comfort in the, comfort in the unknown, uh, how have you taken risks in your life? What have you learned in taking risks in your life? How have you developed your, your, yourself? How have you dealt with adversity, um, overcoming failures, uh, those sorts of things? To summarize for our scholarships, we have six scholarships on offer. Those six scholarships are separated into three categories, excellence in creative business, creative first nations, creative trailblazer. And in each case, there is a scholarship for the diploma, which is a 100% scholarship, and the bachelor degree, which is a 50% scholarship across each of those three categories. That results in the six scholarships. And in total, it's, a, it's worth about $100,000 worth of value. We're looking for five attributes, five key attributes of individuals looking to join the CG Spectrum Institute business community. Those are a curious mind, a creative streak, a proactive approach, a quest for innovation, and a comfort with the unknown. You're tasked with producing a video pitch, highlighting those attributes in you as a human. You need to make that application via our scholarship application process on our website. Um, by the end of December, 30th of December. It's not the end, it's before New Year's Eve, uh, but it's December 30 is when that um, applications for those scholarships is due. Uh, we'll go through a, a analysis process uh, determining the people that are worthy of receiving those scholarships uh, and the answers will be back to you by early January. So I'm gonna leave our formal delivery of this webinar there. Um, a bit of an overview of what we've been through We've given you a bit of a, an idea about CG Spectrum Institute and what we're all about. We've given some details on each of the courses that we're offering to market, a diploma of business and a bachelor of business, how they're structured, some examples of, of the subjects that run through them and the lecturers that will be, that will be or the educators that will be joining you on your learning journey. Um, we've indicated sort of the, the application process and how to go through and giving you some details about the scholarships that are on offer. So I think I'll just uh, allow us to have some time for some targeted questions. So one question that came through is um, part-time study. Is part-time study available, generally speaking, and also for scholarship students? And the short answer is yes. Uh, you can study part-time uh, in this in, with for each of these courses. And there's no distinction as to whether you're a, a scholarship student or a non-scholarship student, um, that opportunity is available to you. And for, for scholarship students, the question is, um, can you start any, any time during the intakes of 2023? And yes, we have three intakes in 2023. We have a February intake, we have a May intake, and we have a September intake. So for all of you, whether you're a scholarship student or not, um, you have the option of being able to start your degree um, at either February 2023 or May or in September. Further question was who's on the panel that judges the scholarships? Uh, so it's an internal panel. Um, and I've given you some indication of some of the academics that are involved. So you can get some idea as to who's behind, but that panel will be led by me and the decisions will be made by me as the academic director of the, of, of the Institute. A question was asked um, in terms of qualification or, or attractiveness for a scholarship application. It says, imagine there's two identical candidates, but one has bachelor degree already and one doesn't. Is there a preference for the candidate with no degree? Um, and my answer to you is that uh, the fact that you have a degree on, or don't have a degree is rather irrelevant to our to what we're looking for with respect to um, the attributes that are desirable for a scholarship recipient. Um, we will be looking like, like, like core on those five desirable attributes. It may well be that a student who's gone through a bachelor degree may, might have 
a set of experiences by going through that bachelor degree that allows them to give evidence on those five attributes. But similarly, a person coming straight out of school and the school leaver um, will have a set of their own experiences uh, to be able to, to put evidence behind those five attributes. And indeed, a person perhaps who haven't, hasn't even finished high school, uh, but has gone on and done a high school equivalency and then done some work in, in, in industry, um, has their own unique set of evidence for those five desirable attributes. Um, so the short answer is there's no distinction between whether you've got a, a bachelor's degree or no bachelor's degree. Um, it's not of interest to us. Uh, what is of interest is uh, the way in which you present evidence on those five desirable attributes as you with respect to you as a human. We're interested in you as a human um, and not necessarily whether you've done a, a bachelor's degree or not. Is a candidate more likely to get the scholarship if they already know what business they want to start? For example, if you've already started a business or you've got a business that you want to, to start and you've got knowledge about that, um, my answer is the exact same about whether you've done the bachelor's degree or not. Um, it's rather irrelevant specific to to that, what it might mean is that you have a set of experiences that allow you to give evidence on those five desirable attributes. Um, so no, uh, if if you've started a business, does that make you, you more likely to to um, to be a recipient of the scholarship? The answer is no, not necessarily. Um, there might be other people that have got evidence for those five attributes that haven't started a business that far exceeds yours um, in starting a business. Um, it comes down to you as a human and the way in which you in which you represent those five attributes. And then five, there's a follow on to that, which is, is there a preference for candidates wishing to start a screen media based company? Um, again, no. While CG Spectrum, the parent company has uh, uh, an existing presence in that um, uh, creative industries, the, the game design space, the film studio space, um, animation, visual effects. Uh, that's the parent company that has that experience. Uh, and indeed, we, we believe that that area is an area of net job creation. And we're designing our courses to take advantage of that net job creation. Yes. Um, but but um, no, uh, just because you're just deciding to start a business um, doesn't matter and, and what industry you're going into with that business doesn't matter. Again, just to summarize, um, what we're really interested in is, is you as a human and how you have evidence to support those five desirable attributes for the scholarship. Alina, did you um, see anything that came across that you thought you might like might, might like to provide some context or clarification around? Not this time, but you know, if, if you're wondering how to get into contact with me or uh, just generally how to apply, um, I think it's Baden, if you go to the next slide, there we go, our contact information. So any questions, you can go to hello at cgspectrum.institute um, or you can go straight to the apply now page where the link is available there and I will be available to answer any of your questions. Um, like Baden has mentioned, the first intake is currently locked in for February 2023 and the scholarship applications close on December 30th. So keep those dates in mind. Um, we look forward to hearing from you all and I'm sure Baden can't wait to see all the scholarship applications as well. But I, I think that's about it. And, you know, I think we've almost hit um, one hour. So that's kind of perfect timing. In my, in my head, we were only 30 minutes in. I guess we had a <laughs> indication of, um, of my proclivity to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, easy um, to talk about something that you're passionate about. <laughs> it is indeed. Um, so I think I'd just like to, to, to finish off by saying to you that, that my professional passion is to build entrepreneurial capability in our youth. That's, that's what I'm all about. If you Google me and my name is unique, I'm pretty certain that um, there's only one Baden Uren in the world. Um, <laughs> if you Google me, you'll see uh, that, that my professional career is targeted at developing entrepreneurial capability in our youth. That's what, that's what I'm attempting to achieve. And I've put my personal touch on these courses. I've, I've I've leveraged my networks and the people that I have trust in. And I was humbled when I was given the opportunity to come on board with CG Spectrum Institute and to be given, given the flexibility to create these courses. Uh, because I've worked in, in university environments for almost 20 years and and been um, and been restricted by the structure that exists and what you can and can't do. Um, and here I've been given free reign 
to create what I believe is the ultimate business course um, moving forward. Um, so I think that's um, that's how I'd like to leave our discussion today. Uh, I'd like to put that out to you to say, um, this has been designed for you. Students have been at the center of the design of these courses. Um, and we can't wait to see uh, our first our first inaugural intake of business students coming into CG Spectrum Institute. I think, I think we'll look back on this, on this, on this time and we'll celebrate our inaugural students that, that were the risk takers, the ones that, that, that put their hand up and say, you know what, this is new, but I, but I believe in it and I'm gonna give it a go. Um, I know uh, the previous organization that I was at, Bond University, um, we held our inaugural students up as, you know, as demigods. Um, the first students that said, yes, I'll have a go in 1989 when that university first started. Um, and I, I see that opportunity here for CG Spectrum Institute. And, um, and we'll look back at, at, um, at these at these change makers who put their hand up and said, yeah, I'll have a go and, um, and we will celebrate you moving forward. So thanks for your time today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the opportunity to, to come in and, and be part of this webinar. Um, and again, if you've got some particular targeted questions, reach out to us at hello at CG Spectrum Institute um, and we'll, we'll do our best to, to answer them as best we can.